Welcome to Sound the Norms. My name is Kenneth Muirtor. The title of today's sermonette is Marriage, Earning Love. And I had in the uh, other previous message titled Marriage, Earning Respect, we kind of went over the notion that, or the truth that we're to remind ourselves of these things. And we made reference to Jesus' prayer for us, that is the believers, those who would believe in him, that Jesus prayed, you know, Father, don't take them out of the world, but he prayed that we would be sanctified by thy truth. And he went on to state that thy word is truth. And then we also made mention of the brazen labor. Okay, that was a labor made of brass that was within the tabernacle of the wilderness, which was a picture of Christ, and that the priests were to go to this labor and, and, and wash prior to any service, Otherwise, they would surely be put to death. And we know that there, God is speaking of the continual condemnation of the flesh and the continual filling and cleansing by the washing of the water of the Word, which is which is the Word of God, which is Christ, which is the Spirit of God. So it's with these things, and also remembering that Peter had told us in his epistles that you know I'm going to make sure that you are reminded of these things, okay? That these biblical truths that we are to work in. Walk in, and all these truths are reflective of God's grace towards us. That is, God's righteousness at the expense of Christ. So, we're talking about marriage here. We're talking about earning love. And in the previous clip, when we discussed earning respect, we were focusing on a woman's role within marriage. And you know, of course, we're we're short on time, and in one sense, where we've got you know you know, 8 to 11 minutes to kind of put forth uh, some biblical truth here. So we can find that segment to a woman's role. Now we're going to confine this segment to a man's role in the sense that, you know, a woman is to earn the husband's love. And how so? Well, he that is the man is the priest of the home. That's what he's supposed to be doing, okay? He is to be the head of the house in all things. He's to be holding up the word of God. He's to present his wife holy unto God. Okay? Not to the bar room, right? Okay? But holy, separated unto good works. He's not to present her to the shopping mall, but he's to present her to the Father in righteousness. Okay? He's not to present her to, you know, inappropriate viewing materials. You know, that's not what the husband is supposed to be doing. The husband is supposed to be applying the word of God in the house. He's supposed to be holding up the truth of God's word in his home, in his place of business, wherever he works. And he's to be providing, you know, and, and he's resting in Christ. He's resting in the Father. And he's hearkening to the voice of the Father. And that's what he's doing. And then he's told he's to love his wife. And not to be bitter against her. Well, he looks at his wife and he says, well, she's not earning my love. You know? She's not doing the things that she's supposed to be doing. She's, you know, you know, she is causing tension, you know, against the things that I'm trying to do. She's not making it easy for me to love her. We have to understand that in spite of our wise shortcomings, that God does not look at that and condone it. Jesus, when he walked this earth, was not in the condemning business, first off. He didn't go around condemning individuals. Why? Because you're already condemned. You're already born with the endemic nature. And the good news is that through the death of Christ, he paid the penalty that we should all have paid, thereby allowing us to put on his righteousness. And when we've done that, when we've come to the brazen altar as represented in the tabernacle of the wilderness, speaking of the atoning death of Jesus Christ, the shedding of his blood for the remission of sins, we've been born again. Now what are we doing? Now we're at the labor, judging, okay, the endemic nature of, saying it is dead and being cleansed that is being sanctified by the truth of the word, by the washing of the water of the word. So God condemns the Adamic nature and he doesn't condone it. 
That is, he's not condoning it, saying, well, it's no big deal if she doesn't want to respect you. It's no big deal if, you know, she burns your dinner and doesn't care to learn how to cook a decent meal for you. Or she, he doesn't care. She don't want to watch your kids. She'd rather put them in daycare, you know, so you can go after the lust of your flesh and have the and have all the nice things that Americans ought to have. Because, you know, let's just redefine what the scriptures mean regarding food and rain. She don't care. She, you know, listen, you think God's saying that he don't care that, you know, she has no respect the fact that you put in 40 hours a week, that you put in 50 hours a week, 60 hours a week, that you spend time going to school in order to have a decent job, in order to provide things. But yeah, it's never enough, you know. When's the next, when are we going to get the next new car? When are we going to get the pool? You know, I'm not saying that, I'm, this isn't a blanket statement, but these are things that, you know, men wrestle with, all right? Now, you think God just condones that? He doesn't condone that behavior, but yet you're required to love her. She's to earn your love. And how so? Well, just like, just like a woman is to submit to the man, and he's to earn her respect, so too you were to earn her love. And as we looked at in the marriage segment titled uh, Earning Respect, we know that as we close that segment, that we look to Christ because Christ paid for her. Now that payment doesn't neglect your responsibilities to obey the Father in all things. You're going to have to obey him. Now if he tells you to go to Alaska and she doesn't want to go, you go and she stays. See, God has not called you to submit to the whims of your of your wife in order to please yourself. And it's, it's painful. It's painful when you have to hold up the word of God at a personal cost to you. Because you're the head of the house. You're the one that's going to be held accountable. Your wife wants to go spend a hundred bucks on something and you don't have it. And you have to say no. And then you have to feel the wrath of that. That's what being a man of God is. That's what walking in truth is all about. You know, your wife says, you know what, she wants to put the kids in daycare, but God's told you, no, she's to watch the kids and you're going to have to sacrifice with uh, regards to your lifestyle. Now, you're going to have to suffer that wrath. But God says if she doesn't depart from you as an unbeliever, you know, i.e. files for divorce, you're to love her. Now, how can you love that? You think God condones her behavior? No. That behavior has been condemned. And the penalty has been paid by the Father when he poured his wrath on his son for that. You see, just back in the garden, was uh, Adam the only one that was punished for eating of the apple? No. Eve was punished too. Everybody's going to be held accountable for themselves. But yet within that, there are roles in the marriage. The man's the head of the house. That doesn't mean that you put your feet back on Sunday drinking beers, watching football games. That's not what being a priest of the home is about. Being a priest of the home is walking in truth and applying biblical truth in your home at all times. With the raising of your children, you know, we're to be teaching them, we're to be the priest of the home, to instructing your wife in the word. It's a man's responsibility. The scriptures tell that the wives are to learn in quietness and submissiveness in the quietness of their own home. The man is the one teaching them. The pastor is equipping them. The pastor equips Okay, he doesn't teach or instruct. He's equipping the man to be the priest of his home. The man instructs his wife. He's the one applying God's word in the house. Presenting her holy unto God that is separated on the good works in Christ. That is guarding her from the serpent seed that she's being bombarded with day in and day out. From the lies of this world that are telling her she would be good enough if she lost 10 pounds. If she had blue eyes. If she, if she, if she. You have to hold up the truth of God's word in your home that she is beautiful. Because Christ has purchased her soul with his blood. You see, that's loving your wife. And that's what God has called us to. In spite of her, you know, uh, actions. In spite of the fact that she's not perfect. Because see, you're not loving her imperfections. You're loving the atoning work of Jesus Christ. And you're loving Christ by loving her. That's the difference. God doesn't condone those imperfections. See, people, have to, we have to understand it. God's not condoning imperfections. When you love your spouse, it's not because he condones their imperfections. It's because he paid for it with the blood of his son. Condemning sin. It's condemned. He hates it. 
And he hates it when your wife doesn't respect you. And he hates it when you don't love your wife. Why? Because you're not looking to them. You've got to look past them to Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. And that's how you love your, your wife. is because you love Jesus. And you're committed to him. And you surrender to him. And we've committed to walking in the truth and rejecting the serpent's seed. Listen, we're out of time here, but I pray God that this has given you some additional truth to stand on as you live with your spouse, that you won't be embittered against her, but that you're going to look to Christ, past her imperfections, and see that he paid for them. It doesn't make him right. It doesn't mean God condones him. It doesn't get you off the hook from doing what God's called you to do, wherever he's called you to do it. But we see that when we've yielded to Christ, and we see that he's paid for all those imperfections. He's paid the sin debt. He gives us the power to love. God bless.